Well, Nevada Guard members and law enforcement keeping a sharp eye and open ears, both in the nation's capital and here at home, all in response to the deadly riot in early January and threats of further violence. As Washington, D.C. sees unprecedented militarized security ahead of the inauguration, Nevada officials are also on high alert as an FBI memo warned of possible armed protest at all 50 state capitals leading up to Wednesday in Carson City. New beefed up security measures like camera towers, more manpower and barriers. A range of the groups that stormed the Capitol last week definitely have a base of support and are organizing in Nevada. Chloe Cooper tracks extremist groups for national nonpartisan think tank Political Research Associates. Her concerns of further violence are shared by local intelligence officials. Deputy Chief Andrew Walsh with Metro says they're monitoring for all threats. Uh, there's been daily conference calls between us and some of our federal partners, daily conversations, hourly updates. Lieutenant William Hudler, chairman of the Police Managers and Supervisors Association, says law enforcement will be alert, ready and prepared. I can tell you that here uh, in Las Vegas, our folks are well trained. We're as equipped um, as any other agency is to handle these type things. Governor Sisolak has also ordered the Guard to assemble a local quick response unit. They will support law enforcement in case of unrest. There's also 200 Nevada National Guard members in Washington, D.C. In honor and duty, says Sergeant Jalen Todd. So what we say we're going to do is defend the Constitution. Unshaped life in downtown Las Vegas. One breathed life into a convention industry and one changed the lives of Las Vegas performers. All three have left Las Vegas bigger and better than it was. All three will be missed. Siegfried Fischbacher, Sheldon Adelson, Tony Shea all said goodbye to this world recently. Their impact will be felt long after. The loss of Tony Shea, Sheldon Adelson, Siegfried Fischbacher in such a short period of time is a shock. And I think it would be more of a shock to the system, truthfully, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic. Dr. Michael Green is an historian with UNLV, tells us each man's contribution to life here was significant. Siegfried and Roy changed Las Vegas shows. Their over-the-top magic made them global celebrities. Roy Horn died from complications to COVID in May. Siegfried talked to us about how the duo lived their dream. All our dreams come true, and that's because I think it's our relationship, the respect from each other and the trust to each other. Tony Shea breathed new life into downtown Las Vegas. He brought Zappos to our city, his company headquartered in an area of town not many would go. Now his downtown project has changed the landscape. Sheldon Adelson, a titan of the casino industry, used that influence to influence the world. He saw a future in the convention industry and made billions because of it. He used that money, both as the GOP's biggest donor and a philanthropist. He was a true kingmaker, not just in the world of, of business, but uh, in philanthropy uh, and in politics as well. There's something particularly sad about the world they left. The show's Siegfried influence shuttered from the pandemic. The businesses Shea helped get off the ground struggling with restrictions and the convention industry Adelson perfected now with an unsure future. COVID has stopped us from coming together to mourn their losses. Dr. Green says maybe the best way to grieve is to continue their work. All three of these people made important contributions in areas where right now we can't enjoy the fruits of their labors, which may make us stop and think about what we do and whether it's temporary or permanent. But also, and I think this would be beneficial, and I think as innovators they would agree with this, uh, for us to stop and think, well, what can we do that's different and better? The idea of zero fatalities only lasted for four hours and 18 minutes before we had a fatality on our roadways here in 2021. Andrew Bennett with the Nevada Office of Traffic Safety says, without a doubt, we have a problem with traffic safety in Nevada. The office's most recent report shows more people died on our state's roads in 2020 than 2019, even though less people were out driving because of the pandemic. When we experienced, you know, a shutdown, a lockdown, a quarantine, whatever you want to call it, and we had months where the vehicles miles driven were dramatically reduced for months on end, and for us to still have more fatalities than we did last year, that absolutely comes down to human behavior and some of the choices that were made behind the wheel. The report shows 314 lives were lost in Nevada crashes in 2020 alone.
That's a more than 3% increase from just the year before. The top causes speeding and impairment. We went from over approximately 120 DUI arrests in the month of December in 2019 to over 150 DUI arrests this last December. In addition to that enforcement, Nevada Highway Patrol Trooper Travis Smacka is hoping Nevadans get the message on their own. Slow down, buckle up, and make plans for a sober driver. And I've been on far too many scenes where I've seen that firsthand. I've seen somebody's life violently cut short at the hands of someone who made a poor decision to drive impaired. The yearly cost of crashes in Nevada is now estimated at more than $1.9 billion, a great expense, but as Bennett reminds, that is nothing in comparison to the loss a family feels when their loved one is senselessly killed in a crash. You know, one of the things I've made a habit of doing is trying to go to any candlelight vigil for a roadway uh, fatality uh, that we hear about. And I think last year I went out to over 150 of them their family is grieving there, and I, you know, it's one of those things where I wish people could see that more often. In Las Vegas, Kendall Kim, News 3.